The tip at the end of this video could save your life. I'll share eight dangerous signs and symptoms of diabetes when you should really worry and seek emergency medical care. How to spot this condition with a high mortality rate. I'm talking about diabetic ketoacidosis. Shall we discuss it? And what to do? Test results, symptoms, and when this acute complication can occur. Why is it crucial for us to talk about this? Because it develops in days or hours, unlike other complications. Why? With diabetes, a heart attack might take years or decades to happen. So you have time to plan and make changes to prevent it. Same with stroke or kidney disease from diabetes. You have time to take action. These are the chronic complications of diabetes, but not this one. Time is very short, often just hours, as you've seen. So it's crucial to spot signs and symptoms, seek help fast and know what to do. Why does diabetic ketoacidosis occur? Because these are dangerous, even life-threatening signs. It's not an exaggeration, okay? If untreated 100% of cases, when have I ever said 100%? Almost never, because in medicine that's rare. There's a saying, in medicine and love, never say never or always, but here, yes, always. 100% of untreated ketoacidosis cases lead to death, and you'll see why. Let's talk about the signs, symptoms, and how it happens. We'll cover diagnostic criteria and a life-saving tip that's really useful. When I started my channel, my first video was motivated by diabetes mortality stats I'd seen. These statistics really caught my attention. Tens of thousands die from diabetic ketoacidosis complications, yet it's preventable. If you're aware of this, you can even prevent death. This statistic is painful because some diseases have no cure. Sometimes there's nothing you can do, you know? Some diseases just happen and we can't do much about them. But this is preventable. It's an avoidable cause of death. See how important this video is? So pay close attention to the signs and symptoms. There are eight. What are these signs? Sign number one, you'll start feeling very thirsty. Why? When blood sugar rises, especially in diabetic ketoacidosis, you'll feel thirstier. Why? To balance high blood sugar, your body tells you to drink more water. It's a way to offset the sudden spike in blood sugar levels. So, intense thirst. You wake up to drink and urinate more often. Instead of five, six glasses daily, you're now drinking 15, 20. It's a noticeable change, increased thirst. Often people overlook it due to easy fixes. I'm drinking more, but it's probably the heat or something new I'm doing. And so it continues and progresses. Why does this happen so quickly? Diabetic ketoacidosis is an acute complication of type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease. The body produces antibodies attacking insulin-producing cells in the pancreas. Insulin production decreases, stops causing blood sugar levels to rise dramatically, unlike type 2 diabetes, which is insulin resistance. In type 2, you produce insulin, but it can't function properly. Insulin resistance develops over months or years. This autoimmune process leads to ketoacidosis in days or weeks. Even with good recent tests, if you have symptoms, seek medical help. A patient can have normal tests and develop type 1 diabetes in just two weeks. That's why staying alert is crucial. The second sign is increased urination. Why does urination increase? You might think if I drink more, I'll pee more, but there's more to it. Kidneys detect high blood sugar and try to flush it out. Kidneys can eliminate glucose molecules. This change increasing sugar elimination through urine starts at values above 180 mgdl or 10 mmol in countries using that unit, okay? The kidneys have sensors that try to compensate by eliminating more fluids. There are other kidney signs too, like increased infections. Why? More glucose is available for bacteria and fungi to grow, leading to urinary infections. Have you heard about ants in the bathroom? It's true, okay? Sweet urine with sugar can attract ants. This can happen not just in the toilet, but also in the trash. Sugar on toilet paper can attract ants. So it's a warning sign, okay? These are the urine-related issues. Even the name diabetes mellitus stems from this. Diabetes means siphon in Greek as patients urinate a lot, and mellitus means sweet. So excessive urine is sweet urine. That's the meaning of diabetes mellitus. 
Your like is already appreciated. You're learning something new. Interesting, isn't it? Many patients enjoy knowing this information. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe if you haven't already. Let's continue with the signs and symptoms. The third sign is breath. There's something called ketone breath. This breath is so distinct that it can even suggest diabetic ketoacidosis to those familiar with it. But why does this happen? Without insulin to move blood sugar into cells and muscles, you lack energy, right? The body tries to fix this by producing ketones for energy. Simply put, unable to use sugar, it activates another energy pathway, releasing ketones through breath. There are other ways, but the lungs help offset high toxic levels by expelling ketones through breath causing ketone breath or halitosis. The fourth sign, interestingly, is weight loss. Why is this interesting? Many think diabetes causes weight gain, not loss. Actually, when blood sugar is high without insulin, you lose weight. Why? Insulin takes sugar, puts it in muscles, and stores it as energy. Without insulin action, you'll experience weight loss. This weight loss has no apparent cause, no new diet, exercise, or routine changes. You're losing weight without knowing why. A 10% or more weight loss in six months is significant and requires medical investigation. Blood sugar levels and other conditions like thyroid need to be checked. In diabetic ketoacidosis, weight loss occurs due to what I explained. Sign number five, nausea and vomiting. I'll add that abdominal pain is also common. Why nausea and vomiting? Your body starts producing substances that make your blood more acidic. You lose appetite, energy, and feel nauseous, often vomiting. When I worked in the ER, I clearly remember diabetic ketoacidosis patients. Many reported abdominal pain, nausea, and vomiting. So it's a sign you really need to pay attention to. Does this mean everyone with nausea or vomiting should rush to the hospital? No. You need to look at other signs and symptoms too. Are you vomiting, drinking lots of water, urinating frequently, and losing weight? These are puzzle pieces that lead to the diagnosis. I'll discuss the diagnosis more, but it's important to highlight this. Sign number six is shortness of breath. In medical terms, we call this Kussmaul breathing. Why? As ketone bodies build up in our blood and body, the lungs try to expel them. You might experience rapid breathing, shortness of breath, and sometimes an increased heart rate. This is a distinct medical sign, not very practical for you to spot. But I'll emphasize the shortness of breath, okay? Number seven, which is also quite noticeable, is fatigue, exhaustion, and reduced physical fitness. It's like you wake up tired. Many patients say, I'm waking up exhausted. And this develops pretty quickly, all right? It's not the kind of fatigue that's been ongoing for five or six years. It's tiredness that's come on in the last two weeks, okay? Why? Your body can't use blood sugar for energy. Insulin isn't working. You lack insulin. You can't produce it. So what happens next? Your body can't use that sugar for energy in your muscles and cells. So fatigue is one of the most noticeable signs. This is easy to spot, unlike shortness of breath. Fatigue is a symptom people notice, and it's present in almost all cases of ketoacidosis. Sign number eight is mental confusion. It becomes harder to think clearly because the brain lacks energy too. Now, what are the diagnostic criteria? I'll discuss the criteria for diabetes, pre-diabetes, and how to recognize ketoacidosis through tests. Let's look at the first table then. I've included a table to make it easier to follow along with this video. I can diagnose diabetes using four different tests. The first test is fasting glucose. A diabetes value is 126 or higher. Between 125 and 100 is prediabetes. Many say prediabetes doesn't exist, but it does, okay? This isn't a myth. A normal value would be 99 or less. I've included millimoles per liter in the table for countries using different units. Another crucial test is glycated hemoglobin. What's that? It's the average blood sugar level over the last 90 days. When properly used, it's valuable for diagnosing diabetes. Fasting glucose has some limitations. I could make a video about that if you'd like, okay? Glycated hemoglobin reflects the average, useful for diagnosis and treatment monitoring. A value of 5.6 or less is considered normal. 5.7 to 6.4 indicates prediabetes. 6.5 and above is diabetes. It's important to note there are two other tests. What's the random blood glucose test? It's a glucose test done at any time of day, without a scheduled appointment, for instance. For diagnosis, the patient must show signs and symptoms. Can we have the signs and symptoms I mentioned? Yes, along with this glucose reading. 
That's why it differs, needing a value of 200 or higher. This diagnostic criterion exists but isn't often discussed. Another widely used test is the oral glucose tolerance test. What's that? You do a fasting test, wait two hours, then take 75 G of glucose. After two hours, you test again to check your blood sugar. Here are the values. Up to 140 is normal as your body got a glucose load. It's not a problem. That's important to note. 140 to 199 is pre-diabetes and 200 or more indicates diabetes. Remember, there are other values here to help you follow the video. Now, how do we examine this serious diabetes complication that needs recognition for treatment? What's the life-saving tip you should know? Well, we need to look for certain characteristics in the tests. When someone shows typical signs like breath changes or weight loss, we check if the blood is acidic due to ketones, simply put. So there are some key characteristics. The pH, which measures blood acidity, must be lower than the value I've shown here. If pH is decreased, bicarbonate should also be lower. This indicates metabolic ketoacidosis, typical of diabetic ketoacidosis. Got it? Another striking feature is the presence of ketones. The most common test is a urine test, which shows ketonuria. What's that? It means ketones in urine, indicating this condition, okay? Some meds can cause this. Ketone bodies in urine strongly suggest it. With acidic blood, these symptoms, high blood sugar and urine ketones, we can diagnose diabetic ketoacidosis. Now, here's the life-saving tip I mentioned. If you suspect these signs and symptoms, what should you do? Besides going to the ER, you know not to wait for an appointment. If you suspect someone has these symptoms, hydrate them. Give them water. Many arrive at the ER severely dehydrated, which increases mortality rates. It reduces the time doctors have for tests and treatment, so stay hydrated. Even before going to the ER, drink fluids. Bring water, as there might be a wait at some hospitals. Staying hydrated gives you more time and could save your life. How many diabetics here have experienced this complication? Share in the comments what the doctor did when you arrived at the ER. We've already started hydration to save time and compensate. It's not a final cure, but it buys us time for precise diagnosis and life-saving treatment. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate this video? If it's a 10, I'll make more videos like this one. This video has to be a 10, okay? For other videos, I'm fine with 8 or 9. This one must be a 10 because it's truly crucial. Also, mention the city you're watching from. I'm speaking from Porto Alegre. Comment if you or someone you know has had this complication. I'll leave a video suggestion for you to watch. It's about the best foods for diabetics that don't raise blood sugar. This is really interesting, you know. Some foods are worse, some better for diabetics. You need to have this knowledge too. Click here to be directed to that video. Take care. See you next time.